we all have habits. Normally, when we think of bad habits, we think of things like this. Smoking, overeating, constantly checking our phones. But what about habits as it relates to mindset and our thinking? What if I told you that complacency can be a habit? That hiding from what scares us can also be habitual? Usually, we look at these as behaviors. But if we aren't careful, they can turn into habits. In some professions, though, habits carry a much greater weight. In Adam Grant's book, Think Again, he parallels the behaviors that we experience in day-to-day -day life with the tools of wildland fighter fighters. Specifically, he focuses on four wildfires where 23 firefighters tragically lost their lives. But what these 23 brave souls have in common is that they were all running for their lives, were within eyesight of a safe zone, and had carried all their tools and equipment with them. With their lives at stake, why would they choose to carry upwards of 75 pounds of equipment all that way? There are a lot of variables that come into play when making decisions like these. But what we do know is that these tools, while in the hands of a firefighter, become much more than just a tool. It's through years of intense training and experience that these tools become part of their uniform, but also part of their identity. They value and cherish these tools because they've been used to save their lives and the lives of others countless times. In fact, some surviving firefighters recalled spending valuable time trying to save place to hide their tools, and in that moment, valued the survival of their tools over themselves. But here's another thought. Is it also possible that they carried all that equipment out of habit? That they were so used to the weight and the feeling of that equipment on their body that they literally never thought to drop it? Whether it was their identity or their habit, this powerfully represents the importance of challenging our own thinking and watching the habits that we form. We may not have life and death decisions like those of firefighters. But if we aren't careful, we can get locked into behaviors that develop into habits and ultimately influence our thinking and our identity. It's embarrassing for me to admit that in the first few years of my career, I became increasingly uncomfortable in social settings. It's no surprise that I'm an introvert. I was thrilled when the majority of my job could be done from my office and where my interactions with the campus went something like this. Email first, phone second, face-to-face -face only when necessary. I didn't consider myself a people person, but this might have been a little extreme. I was comfortable, maybe too comfortable, and the ha habit formed of avoiding interactions that made me uncomfortable. But as that habit set in, I wasn't just becoming uncomfortable around others. I was also starting to believe that this is who I was and that I wasn't capable of anything else. This is where our thoughts, our habits change our thoughts. I had become so practiced at working safely behind the scenes that it when it became time for me to do something that was a stretch, the experience of it alone would reinforce that this is something I was not good at, something I wasn't capable of, and something that I couldn't be. But not all habits are bad. In fact, if we do it right, habits can be a powerful tool for success. We've heard Freeman's quote a hundred times. Watch your thoughts. They become your words, actions, habits, character, destiny. This is the right way to create a habit, with attention and intention. But before we talk about creating habits, it's important to understand what a habit is. A habit is a mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. Neuroscientists believe that habits are formed in the basal ganglia, 
This is an area deep in the brain near where the spinal cord connects. But we know it's our prefrontal cortex that's the area of the brain used for thought and decision making. So when we create a habit, we're actually moving the action and behavior from our prefrontal cortex to the basal ganglia. And this gives us a few advantages. The first is that formed habits make the action and behavior easier to perform going forward. Think of something that used to be hard for you, like parallel parking. At first, you might have found this challenging. It took a lot of thought, concentration. The more you did it, the easier it became. Eventually, you almost didn't have to think about it anymore. Another big advantage of habits is that it frees our brains up for other simultaneous thoughts and decisions. This is why we can have a conversation and listen to music while driving at the same time. When we build healthy habits intentionally, they can be powerful tools that we can use to be successful each and every day. This is one of the reasons why personal trainers focus on establishing an exercise routine. They know that if you can turn that routine into something that's habitual, something that you do every day, you'll be much more likely to succeed and stick with it. On the other hand, though, bad habits can form accidentally. Sometimes we don't even realize it. And they're very tough to break. One of the interesting things that I found about bad habits is that even the strong ones, even the ones that are part of how you see yourself, can cause us to be unhappy. This might resonate with many of you. How many of you go for that late night dessert and feel bad about it immediately afterwards because you've had a big bowl of ice cream every night this week? But in my career, I found the more I shied away from others, the more dissatisfied I became with my job. I felt trapped with nowhere to go, and I was disconnected from the community that I served. I watched as colleagues and role models foster relationships across the campus, present seemingly with ease. I was letting old habits define me, become increasingly unhappy, and jealous of others. It was a cycle of misery. But I didn't understand that. There wasn't anyone that could help me make sense of it. I just knew that I was unhappy. So how did I break it? I got lucky. I think ambition won out. Even though I didn't see myself as a social butterfly, I also couldn't stand feeling limited that way. So I started taking baby risks things that were just outside my comfort zone. Then increasingly larger risks. I wasn't always successful. I usually felt awkward, sometimes like an idiot, but I always was OK, and I always learned something. Over time, though, my habit of avoiding was replaced by one of attacking. At times, this felt like a form of self-abuse, but I viewed anything that made me uncomfortable as a challenge, and I went straight at it. So tell me, think of your own life. What habits are weighing you down? Now the fire is at your back, and you have a choice. Are you going to move forward the same way that you have? Are you going to cut the weight and do something different? Leaving what we know behind is scary, but it also gives us our biggest opportunity to grow. I know what I'm going to do. So tell me, what are you going to do with your one precious life? Watch your habits. They just might become your thoughts. Thank you.